Awe, 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 what is up ladies and gents, welcome back to another vlog. Remember the one with Tashrik and the 350? Well, we've got Voodoo this time, and its owner is a nail artist in a Vogue magazine. We are out at Westgate VW today on the corner of Brighton and Okavango Road out in Durbanville, Grafontein. Um, and we are very grateful to be in this space, probably one of the best dealerships in Cape Town in South Africa, simply because they said yes to me. So let's get the man in who was actually able to pull this off, Mr. Jason Davids from VW Westgate or Westgate VW, new car sales, um, and let him sell you an 8R. Good day, sir. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having us. No problem at all. Um, how do you get him to say yes? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not that hard. You know, you, you go with puppy dog eyes and they look, they see right through it. And you just be like, well, it'll bring attraction to the dealership. And then everything's a yes after that. Well, I mean, looking at the space and all the cool cars that's here and the nice layout, um, surely you can know something else coming. Oh, there's, yeah, there's other plans as well. That we've been talking about. There is. There that is, I'm sure everybody else would be interested in. Well, can I speak about it? Yeah, feel free. Fantastic. The floor's yours. <laughs> so, look, um, we're trying to make our name out in this space. We, out of, my, out of all the groups that sit in VW that's in Cape Town, we're the only one with our group called CFAO. And we're trying to make a, a splash in an otherwise bigger pond. And what we're going to do is we like having people, you know, around our dealership. More eyes, more buys. So I'm thinking maybe we host like, like maybe like a cars and coffee or something like that at the dealership. Everybody free, whatever, whoever you are, whatever you drive, bring it. Something like that always helps, you know. So that's that's what I'm planning. That's what we have to do. I must get the okay from that for from the bosses upstairs first. <laughs> but I'm sure they will be they'll be keen for it. Definitely. I needed to get some photos real quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's not often that I get to do that um, and also just be on the floor of one of the best dealerships in the city, the mother city that is. So with that being said, let's introduce Miss Voodoo, Miss Glitterella's nail bar, Miss Christy Phillips. So this is Christy, she's going to tell us what the Vogue nail tech drives in Cape Town and why. Hi guys, my name is Christy. I'm from a little town in KZN called Peter Maritzburg. And uh, well, I don't know what to say. Why Cape Town? So I heard that Cape Town has a big trend for artists and the town that I come from has very little hope for anyone with an artistic or a creative nature. So I knew that Cape Town was the hub of artistry and decided this is the place to be for my career. So I am a high-end fashion nail artist. So I specialize in hand-painted artistry on nails, which is quite a niche thing to do because not many people can do it. So I've had a few endorsements uh, on my name, so I've been in the Business Insider in the Sunday Times and I was rated one of the top seven in the country by Woman in Home magazine and I recently got a feature in the Vogue Philippines Summer Edition which will be out in May, June. V. V for VW, V for Vogue and V for Voodoo. Well, actually it was a lady uh, from London who booked a set of nails for me while she was in Cape Town um, shooting for Vogue and we got chatting about what she does for a living and she told me and I said oh it would be so awesome if I could um, get a spot in the Vogue magazine and she said well why not because I'm shooting a big shoot in Cape Town for Vogue so I um, ended up doing two models and uh, one of the models was sponsored by Gucci, so yeah, I'm just waiting for the release, the release date. But uh, the photographer is actually going to hand deliver the magazine to me from London herself in December. Tell us about your car, 
So I originally started off with a Mark 1 Golf, a 1.8 Sport, which my grand bought brand new off the showroom floor in, at BW in Peter Maritzburg in 1990. She then passed the car down to my mom and my mom drove it for a bit and then it was given to me for my 21st birthday and um, I had it for 11 years. And uh, yeah, um, they did a little article about me on the Volkswagen Facebook page. Um, <laughs> I unfortunately I had to leave it in Peter Maritzburg. And uh, when I came to Cape Town, I made friends with the girls at VW Barons. And I did all their nails and they asked me what I really, really wanted. And I said, I want a VW. Um, originally offered me a VW up. And I said, I'd rather walk. <laughs> I was dead set on a polo and, um, ah, yeah, imagine. yes, yeah. that's the, that's the car I started with here. Yeah. Um, and then they got it for me. They did all the signage. I hadn't driven the car or seen it at all. And then they brought me to the dealership, uncovered it. And it was pink glitterellas across the car, all my signage on the back, Facebook, Instagram. I was very grateful. Um, but after joining the car community with my polo and seeing all the fast cars, I was like, okay, well now I need a GTR. And so I got a GTR. Yeah. So being a little person on my own is not very intimidating. And as a person who lives alone, does everything alone, runs my business alone, um, I didn't want to be a victim to the outside world. So I felt like if my car looked aggressive, then nobody would approach me on the road. <laughs> so it's quite exciting um, to have done it up to look mean and aggressive when I'm actually not mean and aggressive. <laughs> What's your favorite achievement so far? Um, well, I moved my salon from Brackenfall to Devartekant which proved to be a huge, huge um, upgrade. Um, I feel like Brackenfell, as great as it is, more homely, I feel like there's just not enough support with what I do. And so Divartekant owns my name now and I get a lot of, lot of support by a lot of people. <laughs> well, um, I actually took the car in today to a place in Paro called Supreme Technic. I just want to iron out a few issues. Um, it is an older car, so it comes with general wear and tear problems. And um, that would mean just doing some preventative measures. And then from there, we might upgrade the turbo, get a custom downpipe, and we'll see from there. I haven't really thought further than that. What would it be at this stage, knowing what you know now? Uh, I'm not going to be the person that says Ferrari and Lamborghini and but a 7R will most probably be my next car. And I've yeah. already told the girls at VW that's the next car I want. And when the time is right, and when I am not so sentimental about this one, then I'll probably get the 7R. Do you need the <laughs> <laughs> push, push, push the R button. There we go. <gasps> Yo! Um, I love how like welcoming people are. I was very nervous in the beginning because I came to Cape Town not knowing anybody and um, originally someone in Joburg actually spotted me in the car scene. I don't know how but they sent me a message and asked if I want to be a part of their team. They have a Cape Town team. I obviously interacted so much with them that they asked me to run a Cape Town one, which wasn't really my scene at the time. And then I got an invite from one of the guys there to join the Panda Crew. And that has literally become my blood family, non-blood family. They're the most amazing people. Like it doesn't matter car scene or not car scene, they're there for you. What's your biggest pet peeve on the roads? Shoot that shot. Lane splitting bikers that think they own the road. Just for reference, we are talking about the ones doing 100 plus in peak traffic. Yeah, not smart. 
and items. We actually had a conversation about this uh, within a week. Yeah. About these items. They, these, these cars are so impressive, for lack of a better word, um, and PG rated and everything. <laughs> um, yeah, like no matter what you are driving, no matter what speed you are going, one of them are either flashing you or they're not going to get out your way. And every time you try and overtake, you just can't. Um, yeah, yeah, like, like, let's not even bring up cutting up that because I've seen items do stuff that items shouldn't be able to do. <laughs> Um, Not possible. I don't. I don't understand it. But honestly, even if I was in an IP for an eight or if I was those squad, I'd be a little scared of that behind me. <laughs> thing. <laughs> it's so. the only thing that won't move out the way is an I ten. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, don't be intimidated. Like everyone is actually really friendly when you're a new person. They're very welcoming, um, as opposed to being a female in the car community. Um, it can be quite intimidating, especially when there's like bigger, better cars than yours. But it's not about that at the end of the day. It's about the passion that you have for your car and for other people's cars as well. Okay, and like we promised in the beginning of the video, let's hear this 8R with an acrobatic exhaust on the back. Take it away, Jason. Is that stock? That's crazy. Some more, some more. I just saw you on the, on the 8R instead of the 7. Oh, yeah. Likes to be touched apparently. I reckon Jason is busy converting Christy here. Yeah? Take a look at this. <laughs> is this the new voodoo? <laughs> Do you think he's converting yeah, you? Yeah, I took my new car. 3.3. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> my